In this video tutorial, we're going to look at our critical path analysis practice question. This is part two, the answer. So if you remember, we had a case study with a fair bit of information. We'll come to that in a few moments. But first of all, let's think about the information we had in our appendix. We had two bits of information. Table one was our list of activities and their durations. And we also had the critical path network diagram, which is given to us blank. You may get like this in an exam. It has happened. Alternatively, you may get one which is partially or completely filled in, and they ask you to make some changes to it. So we're going to do that as well. So this really will be a far more than you would be asked to do in an exam. So our question, board directors are keen to launch a new product in time for Christmas. And the case study tells us that's 20 weeks away. So we've got a target to complete our network diagram with a latest finish time of 20 weeks. We're going to start with the early start time, which goes in this top quadrant. And we're going to work our way from left over to right. When we get there, we can then work backwards for our latest finish time. We always start with the zero at the beginning because is, there's no delay before this, there's no activities that precede it, so we can start theoretically immediately. To work out the early start time of activity B, so after A is finished, we take the early start time of A plus its duration, and we need that period to pass before we can start B. So 0 plus 6 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9, so at the earliest point we can start D and C. 9 plus 4 is 13. However, we need to pause here, we've got two activities going together, we have to wait for both of them to finish. So before we can calculate the early start time of H, we need to go back and look on this lower path. So 0 plus 3 means that G can start after 3 weeks. So H has to start when C and G have finished. So we need to wait for the last one of those to be completed. So we're looking for the highest number. 9 plus 2 is 11. 3 plus 9 is 12. So this is actually going to be 12. This is our second rule. Always go for the highest number. The reason, if we start it after 11, 9 plus 2, G wouldn't have actually finished, we'll have one more week to run. If that was building a house, put the walls up, we can't really put the roof on. So we give the highest number. 13 plus 3 is 16. 12 plus 5 is 17. Again, that highest number. So 17 goes there. And 17 plus 2 gives us 19. So our complete project can be completed in 19 weeks. So in the interest of efficiency, this will be our latest finish time. Now we're going to work backwards. We're going to take this lower quadrant, take away the duration, gives us the latest finish time of the previous activity, in this case H and E. 19 minus 2 is 17. Go along the top way. 17 minus 3 is 14. Again, there's two activities coming together, so we need to do this activity before we can do our latest finish time of B. 17 minus 5 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. 14 minus 4 is 10. So they will both be 10, it's coincidental. We'll see in a moment on our start, this isn't necessarily always the case. 12 minus 9 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, we haven't done this one yet, 10 minus 3 is 7, 7 minus 6 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, so we go for the lowest number, which is our 3 minus 3, so it's 0. Coincidentally, node 1 is always an early start time and later finish time of 0. So let's work out our float and our critical path. And we'll keep a record of all our tasks that have float as we go on. And we'll also detail afterwards what is our critical path. So how do we work that out? Well, we're looking for those tasks that do have float, and those that don't are going to be critical. And how do we calculate that? Well, let's start with activity A. We're actually going to look at the latest point it has to be finished, and compare it to the time it must be started, less that duration. If anything greater than zero, we have some float. So let me show you. 7 minus 6 is 1, minus 0 is 1. So activity A does have, and I'm going to put it up the top here, one week of float. Activity B, 10 minus 3 is 7 minus 6 is 1. So again, activity B has one week of float. If we now go to activity C, 12 minus 2 is 10, minus 9 is 1. So C has one week of float. D, in the same way. 14 minus 4 is 10, minus 9 is 1, so D equally has one week of float. E, 17 minus 3 is 14, minus 13 leaves us with 4, so E has one week of float. Let's get to the bottom. F, latest finish time is 3 weeks, takes 3 weeks, 3 minus 3 is 0, and must be starting 0, so there's no float here. So this is going to be a critical task. I'm going to mark it with a line, and that's how we show critical. 12 minus 9 is 3, minus 3 is 0. G is also critical. H, 17 minus 5 is 12, 
one is 12, zero, it is critical. And our final task, task I, 19 minus two is 17, minus 17 is zero. So our critical path, so the route from node one, is F, G, H, and I. So here's that critical path analysis cleaned up for you to look at. Our critical task being F, G, H, and I. Those are pretty much, with the exception of I I'll come to, all to do with the taking apart and rebuilding our factory facilities, all operations tasks. The top line A, B, C, D, and E are all very much marketing. And the launch is the final thing, which depends on everything else coming together on time as well. Now from our case studies, quite a lot of information that we really should be aware of. Again, you'll get good application by using the case study as well as what's in those appendices. So our toy company are, provide gifts, it's very much a gift product rather than something bought for themselves, sold for the gadget shop. And we gather that this is a leading product for Christmas from what's given us in the case study. So this is actually a very significant launch, so therefore there's a lot riding on this. Our operations director is new, so that's quite interesting. What are they doing before? How much experience have they got? We might not know this in the case study. Again, the snippets I've given you, we certainly don't know. The areas that are critical, F, G and H, are all to do with taking apart this very old factory building and actually completely renovating it. That's a big task, and that's probably something that's not been forecast before. So how accurate is that information going to be? That's something we need to consider. 20 weeks until Christmas, and again, that 20 weeks is so we can get maximum exposure. If it is 21 weeks, 22 weeks, whatever it might be, that doesn't make quite so much of an impact. Um, it's not like we're going to completely miss sales, but we'll certainly miss that maximum period. So something to bear in mind, we might have some leeway here. You might want to use this in your evaluation in terms of significance. Our managing director, and nicely pointed out here, they used to be our marketing director, so they're looking at this from a marketing perspective, has concerns over the time allowed to actually gather the test market data. They think it should actually be six weeks. As a reminder, initially, it was three weeks. Now if we update our critical path, and again this is a task you might be asked to do in an exam, you'll see the impact if we double task E to six weeks from three that this has. It actually makes the marketing activities A, B, D and E now critical and changes our total project latest finish time to 21 weeks. So this would actually make us outside of that target of 20 weeks. So that's quite interesting. Again, it's quite tight though. So let's have a look at the arguments. So remember, good evaluation question, you need both sides of the argument, you need balance to show good evaluation. So it is achievable. The arguments we've got, well, the critical path analysis outlined by our operations director shows we can complete in 19 weeks. So we'd have one week to spare. It's not a lot, and that's probably something you might want to point out, but it is within schedule. We'd finish a week early. The firm are actually likely to be able to predict certainly the marketing aspect, those A, B, C, D, E tasks, quite accurately. I'd imagine they've been doing this for a few years. It's the factory things that are critical that I'm more worried about though. The critical tasks are all construction based and so therefore we could throw more resources at those, more money, more workers and maybe outside companies we're working with so we can hold those accountable. If we're getting information from them, they're experts, so have they contribute to our critical path? That might add for the accuracy. But we need a counter argument. So why might it not be achievable? Well the new managing director is a marketing expert project could well exceed 20 weeks if he is correct and obviously that puts a week over where we want to be. That's significant certainly if that 20 week event, that launch, is a very very big affair. That could make a big difference, it could be make or break for this product this year. The building work is an unknown project. How will the operation director know this information is correct? We don't know this. Could be the fact he's got it right but we don't know where he's been in the past and it's something again building work notoriously overruns. And what experience has this new operations director got in terms of putting critical path together or of this business? These are unknowns, and unknowns uncertainty will detract from the accuracy of the predictions we see in our critical path analysis. So where could you go with evaluation? Well, I'm not going to give you a definite result, but I will give you some thoughts that you might want to consider. Either way, it's very close to the 20-week deadline. If the original forecast is correct, it would take 19 weeks, which is one week spare, one week of float throughout. And if the marketing director, who's now the operations director, is correct, we're actually going to take 21 weeks. So it's either way very close to the 20-week deadline, but it's how important going over by a week actually is. Even if they do meet that deadline, does that mean they're going to rush? Are they focusing on time rather than actually getting the correct information from customers to make the right product? The right product, even released a couple of weeks late, could have massive sales. It could be the runaway success of the year, the product of the year. So does it matter if it's a week late? Maybe the focus is in the wrong place here for this business. And how critical is the launch date? 
Is 20 weeks make or break, or is it just less than desirable? We'll still get sales, there won't be maximum sales, but what difference is that going to make? So it's things you want to consider in terms of the final evaluation.